Yo, what is going on YouTube? It is OG and today we're gonna to be doing something a little different. So I actually put a decent amount of effort into this video. I know it's insane. Um, but anyways, we're gonna be doing the top five brawlers to one trick. Now by one trick, I don't mean like, you know, they're like all gonna be super fun, even though some of them are really fun. Um, I mean one trick like for competitive or like if you want to like push a brawler really high and just try getting like a rank 35 or like 1k cups or something like that. These are the brawlers that you're going to want to do that with. So we're going to be ranking them in a few different ways. Um, the first one, which is really important, is going to be the modes. Um, what modes you can play them in. Solo, duo, b-ball, siege, gem grab, bounty, and heist. And then after that, we'll do a skill cap, like if they're easy to learn um you know do they have a high skill cap and then the mechanics um after that it'll be the counters for them like i won't go too like into specifics for that but just like the main counters for the brawlers and then after that we have the star powers and then finally the balancing history so let's get into the list all right guys so for number five we have carl so for carl his mode solo i'm just gonna be ranking them four out of five or out of five by the way so <laughs> For solo, he's 4 out of 5, duo 4 out of 5, b-ball 5 out of 5, siege 3 out of 5, gem grab 4 out of 5, bounty 3 out of 5, and heist 3 out of 5 as well. So fairly balanced all across the board. Um, his best mode, in my opinion, is definitely b-ball. I'd say gem grab is a close second. And then even the solo and duo modes, he's like really strong too. Um, especially duo, I find, because he synergizes really well with a few brawlers. So for his skill cap, I put 3.5 out of 5, and he's pretty easy to play decently, but he does have a few mechanics to his kit, which I really like about Carl. Um, I'm not like a Carl main. There was a point where I played a lot of him, but it's really fun how you can kind of how Supercell enabled his attack to go around walls um, and how he only has like one ammo clip. And also, I really like how you can kind of spam it against like a wall or like a box like close range and you can just get like so much damage out of it. So those mechanics are all like pretty well like thought out and there is skill cap to them. You can definitely do some crazy outplays on like Carl v Carl or Carl like on other matchups. So he definitely has a skill cap and his super straight is pretty straightforward though it's just kind of like you spin i mean you guys have seen this super before you just go in and spin but you can actually get really creative with it and make some like really clutch plays so he is a fairly high skill cut brawler in my opinion next up his main counter um it's just sterile i think like there are other brawlers that do pretty good against him but i don't want to get into specific situations with this list so his main counter is definitely daryl in my opinion Next up, Star Powers. Um, he has Protective Pirouette, which he'll gain 30% shield, and then Power Thrower, which makes his attack go a little faster. I think it's 13% right now. Um, but they're both decent Star Powers, and they fit his kit pretty well. They're pretty well thought out, I think, and it's situational right now. They did a good job. It was definitely Protective Pirouette um, for a bit, and if you want to go way back, it was Power Throw, but they did balance them, and they're both like pretty balanced right now. All right, so his balancing history is he was weak on release, and he was probably like the worst brawler in the game. But ever since then, he's been meta or just like out of a top 10 brawler, so he's he doesn't really seem like he's going anywhere. Just his kit, he's like a tanky lane, and he fares really well against like a lot of the other lanes. So he, I think he'll always have a place kind of in the meta, and if not, as a niche pick. Alright guys, next up at number 4 we have Barley. So for Barley, um, solo 3 out of 5, duo 3 out of 5, ball 3 out of 5, siege 5 out of 5, gem grab 4 out of 5, bounty 3 out of 5, and heist 4 out of 5. Now his stats don't sound as good as Carl's and that's because Barley is really like map and comp dependent. But just with all the maps in the game right now, they all like really favor, not all of them, but a lot of them do tend to have a lot of walls which favor comps with barley or like other throwers so for a skill cap um two out of five his attack's really easy to land it has a wide hitbox and it kind of like covers the area for a bit too so it's good area denial um easy super you know it's just an extension of his attack just a lot more area denial and you know you can chain it pretty fast as well so the only like really skill part to his kit in my opinion is you need to kite around walls properly and play your matchups but um he's a fairly simple brawler to do well on his main counters are Tick and Mortis, um, but Mortis you don't play against very often unless it's like Brawl Ball with randoms. And then Tick you do see a good amount, but the reason why I put Barley on this list instead of Tick is just because Barley is an OG brawler um, and he has just been around and like in the meta or like 
you know the best thrower for a long long time there's only a few instances where i'd say like mike was better than him or like even tick i think he's definitely a safer pick than tick just because he fares a lot better against tanks in some other matchups so for his star powers he has medical use and extra nauseous and medical use right now in my opinion is just broken it needs a healing nerf it's way too much sustain and you only want to take this star power in though against like lanes where you know you're gonna get poked so for instance like other throwers like tick barley um even mike maybe but you know you can play around a mic pretty easily and like stuff like spike some something like that where you're gonna get hit every now and then and you can just keep spamming so you don't need to like stop and regen and it's just really good for holding control but you are gonna want to take extra nauseous in if you know they're gonna be playing like a lot of tanks or someone that you just need that extra bit of damage on just kind of like spam them out of your lane so for his balancing history like i said he's almost always been meta and it's just because of his kit there's only a few throwers in the game and he's definitely the safest pick um his mechanics are a lot simpler than mike so it's easy to be consistent on and you know i'd say he's been better than mike the entire time besides one meta where you could just auto aim mike super and he was like the best brawler in the game because you'd never miss a mike super so you could just chain them but um since then you know he's just been insane and just really consistent and he is a safer pick in most modes besides bounty um than tick all right guys next up we have spike my favorite my baby um <laughs> so for solo 3.5 out of or 3 out of 5 duo 3 out of 5 ball 4.5 out of 5 siege 4 out of 5 gem grab 4 out of 5 bounty 2 out of 5 heist 3 out of 5 so pretty um consistent numbers there the only like ones that kind of stand out would be b-ball uh, which i think is his best mode and I wouldn't say he's like super meta there because of some of the other brawlers that I'll cover. Um, but you know, he is a really solid pick and he's usually like a safe pick. He doesn't have a lot of hard counters, which I'll get to. Um, there are a few. And then his worst mode is definitely bounty just because it, it favors like his counters pretty much. Uh, so you may not want to play spike in bounty. <laughs> skill cap, um, he's pretty easy to learn, but he definitely has a high skill cap. So I'm giving him a 4 out of 5 just because of that. He's a glass cannon and he has interesting mechanics and his super and star power. I really just like his kit. Um, this might be a bit biased, but you can just get like so creative with him and he's just a ton of fun to play. So with your main attack, you can consistently poke out opponents and you got to like think about it a bit. I mean, yeah, you can get away with spamming, but if you're playing against someone smart, you kind of like have to, it's like a mini game within the game. So you have to like think and predict their movements and just kind of like position um, not even just your spikes, but you want to like position yourself so your opponent has to go in a more vulnerable position uh, for your spikes as well. His super is really good for setting and stopping plays and it synergizes really well with teammates and also with his fertilizer star power. So his main counters are tick and just touching on the bounty thing, like just if you're in an open lane, I won't get into two specifics, but just open lane, like long range rollers tend to beat them too but uh, watch out for those ticks. <laughs> star powers, uh, they're not balanced at all, and I don't think they ever will be, just because of Curveball, it's such a bad star power, and they need to remove it from the game, because we saw the Curveball meta, and it was just not enjoyable. It took like all the skill out of Spike out of it, and it's just, I'm not ever gonna condone anything that makes like a unique mechanic like easier to use. Um, but Fertilizer is definitely a strong star power right now. 800 HP per second is insane sustain, and you can just make really cool plays with it, which I like, and it's just a really well thought out star power and definitely one of the best ones that the dev team has come up with. So for his balancing history, Spike has pretty much always been meta, which I love. Um, he's definitely been at least a top 10 brawler for, I'd say 90% of the Brawl Stars history. Even like back in beta, he was like really good too. Um, he was, the best brawler in the game for a while and then he was also really broken with the curveball meta but besides that he's always just been like a strong niche pick and he's in a decent place right now so i can't really see the dev team messing around with him too much except for maybe the curveball star power which they need to just like rework please take it out but he he is definitely a solid pick all right number two we got sandy uh, uh this one's painful so solo four to five duo four to five b-ball 5 out of 5, Siege 5 out of 5, Gem Grab 4 out of 5, Bounty 3 out of 5, Heist 4 out of 5. Um, he's just super strong brawler right now, and it's his kit, which I'll talk about right now. Skill Cap, 1.5 out of 5. Such an easy brawler to play. Um, you know, there's literally no mechanics to him, except for there's a slight advantage if you, like, shoot from the left side. Like, let's say you're in a Sandy 1v1 
your shot like it goes left to right so you kind of want to shoot aiming at the left side first if it's like a poke battle between sandies but it's super specific and you know it's not a very fun mechanic so his super takes up half the map and it's just straight up area denial um especially with the rude sand star power and you can pretty much shoot through walls his attacks broken his star powers are really unimaginative and really basic it seems like i don't know they came up within like two minutes like they were releasing the brawler they forgot the star powers and they're just like okay give him this <laughs> but i'm not a big fan of sandy as you guys can probably tell from the review so far <laughs> his main counters i don't think he has any counters he plays so well into like pretty much almost every matchup and if he does struggle against a certain matchup, like let's say like a thrower or something, as soon as he gets his super, it just completely flips it upside down and turns it in his favor. And he can chain his super like really easily. So for star powers, rude sands and healing winds. Rude sands is definitely the better star power. It keeps tracks of his enemies and doesn't let them regenerate. Um, but healing sands, it's not a bad star power either, but rude sands is just so broken for like area denial and just stopping regen, which is such a crucial part of the game. And it's just such a big area. They really need to rework not rework um just nerf the area of his super and just kind of like touch up on his attack and i think he'd be more like tolerable but he's just his kit's broken right now so they need to do something to him balancing history he was the best brawler in the game by far unreleased um nobody came close to him for like a month and then they've nerfed rude sands but it's still just so much area denial it doesn't matter about the damage it's the fact that people can't regen in it and they're just constantly taking some damage too um and you know it's a really strong super already you can literally just synergize solo with your team and they can't you're in, all invisible not just you your team's invisible um in like half the map for like a long amount of time so it just when you hear it, something like that it just sounds so broken like coming out of my mouth um so they really need to rework sandy a little bit all right guys number one we got gene solo four out of five duo five out of five b-ball four out of five siege five out of five gym grab five out of five bounty four out of five and heist two out of five skill cap okay first off um you can just see he's so strong in like all the modes he's definitely a top five brawler in pretty much every mode right now besides heist and it's just ugh, okay. let me get to the skill cap two out of five that's being generous I'm, I'm i'm saying two out of five so you feel better about yourself bobby um <laughs> he's pretty much been a top five brawler for the past 10 months um his mechanics every single aspect of his kit is just broken so he's a mid with strong hp his poke range is insane and just the spread on it too but then if you get close to him his attack like it's so strong too 1700 with spirit slot 1400 without um and he has decent reload speed as well and then his super you can literally like play like trash the entire game and then just auto aim super and you know it'll like win you the game so it's also like i just said you can auto aim pretty much nine out of ten gene supers and i thought it was like harder than that but then i tried playing it in scrims and it's just it's so easy um so he's just he has way too much impact on the game with like what little skill he really requires his main counters he doesn't have any counters you could say throwers maybe as soon as he gets his super um you know that's gg throwers and then i guess you could say like maybe tanks but like i said he can just poke them down really well and he deals with them pretty solid as well he doesn't have like a huge amount of bursts like if they get really close like a shelly or something but you know he doesn't play bad into them at all in my opinion so for his star powers we got spirit slap and magic puffs magic puffs is definitely the one for 3v3s that you want right now especially if you can synergize really well with your comp you can get so much value out of it and a lot of like teams are literally just starting to play like really close together with like um magic puffs obviously you can't do it in every mode but in stuff like brawl ball where it's like really grassy maps or um even some gem grab maps it's actually a really solid strategy and even in like stuff like snake prairie um you know you want to take magic puffs into that but Spirit Slap, it's also not a bad star power, and if you're like pushing with randoms, I'd recommend taking that. Or like the solo mode, obviously you don't get any value out of Magic Puff, so take it there as well. Or even in duo, depending on your comp. Balancing history, he was so bad on release, and I miss that so much. <laughs> he was given a few buffs, like being able to pull through walls and break walls. Um, and he became the best brawler in the game. He received one range nerf to his super. Um, I'm pretty sure that's all the nerfs he got. 
and all it did it did make him worse don't get me wrong but all it did was make him lower skill cap the the best part about gene before was it was so rewarding when you like aim that max range pull and you just connected and like you can make some crazy clutch, clutch plays but now it's just like okay i auto aim and i'll hit it like max range pretty much so i'm really disappointed with what they've done with this brawler this brawler and sandy they're just oh, it's really disappointing to say the least but um they definitely need to either rework gene or just i know they're not going to delete them but i'd i'd be okay if they deleted them from the game okay guys some honorable mentions uh we got tick um and tick's always been pretty solid as well they gave him a buff for whatever reason i'm not sure but i guess when he first got released he was on the weaker side but you could just tell from his mechanics like if they gave him like a little buff um he'd be really really annoying and he was definitely a top five brawler in the game for a while and on certain maps he's definitely he's a niche pick for sure um on certain maps so he still just dominates and i can't really see it's just his kit as well like these brawlers that have the really like simple but effective kits and just his range the area denial how long his mines last on the ground and even his tick head's not a bad super so he is definitely one to look out for as well and then i'm gonna go with brock just because brock's been super balanced for brock the dev or the balancing team's done the best job with out of any brawler in the game he's been really well balanced for pretty much the past year he was weak in beta for a while but then they gave him a few buffs and ever since then he's just been like so well balanced the only thing they've tinkered with would be his star powers and they made incendiary definitely really strong right now i think it could use a little nerf um but it's not the biggest deal and rocket number four is still good in a few modes but incendiary is definitely the star power of choice for him and then finally i got penny um just because penny you can use in a lot of the modes as well and be super effective it's all about your turret though with penny so it's really map dependent as long as there's and a lot of the maps do tend to pet favor uh penny just with all the walls as long as you can get like a good turret placement out you'll be fine um so i wanted to include her in honorable mentions as well anyways guys that is gonna be it for today's video um like i said i put a little more effort into this one so hopefully it does well let me know if you guys like it and i'll see you all tomorrow peace